Hello, I am Fajar Purnama and there have been people who contacted me of how to implement the paper that I publish which is uh, rsync and rdiff implementation on models and models backup and restore feature for course synchronization over the network so they asked me of how to create a synchronization interface to synchronize uh, learning contents um, more of a course contents between model learning management system and so I directed them to the script that I used to demonstrate the concept that I wrote here on my github which is uh, this one so the scripts are mostly written in PHP there are also some HTML and JavaScript and what I created here is uh, similar to um, similar to Dropbox, Git, uh, Google Drive they can they might be able to be used to replace my scripts so it's not a ready-made version to be implemented yet but it's just to demonstrate the concept that I have written here I, will, I also on this first part of the video I would like to explain the background behind the synchronization between Moodle system research or this topic or this project but if you are more interested in the, the script please skip this video and go to the third part of my video so to start, start off this term synchronization between model system it's uh, introduced in 2009 by my professors from Kumamoto University and in collaboration with some professors in Institute of Technology Surabaya and here the term is one of the key point is the distributed model system or distributed LMS where they discuss of how to provide education for everyone like to be able to make education available on the remote part of the regions up to the ends of the continents and they say having an, an online course is one of the solutions and so let me go to this slide first to give you an illustration that um, for example a map of Indonesia and a very long time ago the the system was used was a centralized system or a centralized learning management system where only the near part of the where only people who are close to the server are able to uh, get a good access um, since the connectivity back then in Indonesia wasn't that good and most of the connection are severe so that people from other regions might not have a good access to this centralized to this central online course and therefore they introduce a distributed learning management system where the servers are distributed to every region and have the people to assess the online course locally and this eliminates the connectivity or availability issue or accessibility as I say it and also there is need to be synchronization between the servers so that's what the so that is a 
as a brief the idea of this two pages paper uh, set although there are many others or uh, there are many others to consider and many issues to consider but you can read the whole of the paper yourself and this two pages paper is basically only the idea of behind the concept in 2012 however not however sorry but in 2012 one of professor Usagawa student now Dr. Oyana uh, realized uh, that concept and published a journal paper called dynamic content synchronization between learning management system over limited bandwidth network it's a uh, quite a long journal paper so you can read it yourself but the keywords in here is about sharing a course contents since it's difficult to is since it's difficult to create a content time consuming and it takes many efforts so course sharing is break uh, in courage and as i said before the needs of distributed learning management system where the course are shared to other servers and there need to be a synchronization and about the synchronization you can read the whole yourself but I'm going on but I will give you a short um, a short illustration let me go to this slide and of course you can read the whole slide yourself say so they gave uh, the title dynamic in their uh, research or in their published paper the term dynamic in this context means that the course are revised every time and the course needs to be uh, shared every time to the other servers whenever it is revised but without a certain method the default way is that the the server or the master site cannot identify whether the slave or they have whether they identify the slave or the clients or other servers have already have uh, parts of the course or not for example this one already have a uh, 900 megabyte of course but still you have to retrieve the one gigabyte of course well while in fact you only need 100 megabyte of data still you need to retrieve the 900 megabyte of duplicate data that is the normal way of synchronization or I call it full synchronization and so I prefer to use incremental synchronization technique instead by maybe you can use a differential algorithm so that the master is able to identify that the slave already have some part of the course and so it wouldn't it doesn't need to send the duplicate data but only the necessary data needed and update the course on the other servers so that is the illustration of the synchronization although there are many things to consider for example there is a personal data or private data of the users and there is also the in the connection and there is also for example the data integrity or is there a risk if we perform synchronization on this course will the activities be destroyed you can read the whole paper yourself
So there are many approach like the one uh, proposed by Dr. Roena is this uh, model. For me, I propose uh, this model, this approach, where I, where the LMS can export the course contents into an archive, and then or into a file, and then perform a incremental data synchronization between these two files. You should understand the, the meaning from this slide. And after the old file or the old con content, course content is updated, let's see here, this is the old file. And for example, I use a remote file differential algorithm called our sync algorithm. I update the old file into a new file. And after updating the old file to a new file, I will import that file or archive back to the LMS which will update the course contents on the learning management system or in this case it will update the contents on the Moodle. And so basically that is it for my for this introduction. But before I finish this video I would like to demonstrate uh this update this file updating concept using an rsync algorithm or using a utility called rdiff on linux and here i have a, a course uh, compress or a course content archive which contain which contains uh, learning contents the old file is the size of 16 megabytes and then after a few days it has been updated to 13 megabytes where more contents are added or some contents have changed and so I'm going to try to update this old contents into a new content so based from so based from this uh, illustration, I have to create the signature of the old file. After I created a signature of this old file, I will have to send this signature if I am on the client side to the server side or from the slave to the master. But since we are already on the same machine, we don't need to do that. And so after that, I'm going to use the signature on the new file to compute the difference or the delta, the difference between the new file and the old file. Here I have generated the side the delta and after that I have to send the delta to the back to the slave or if I'm on the client side I have to download the delta and uh, now I will use the delta to patch the old file into a new file or to update. As you can see, I've created, I've updated the old course contents or the old archive into the new archive, which is identical to the new one.
and if you're wondering why is it still quite big that the difference is uh, 20 or the delta size is a uh, 23 megabyte where 30 minus 16 should be 14 to 15 megabyte that is bec because I conduct this algorithm between a compressed archive which is uh, the calculation is not uh, that accurate and therefore the best way is to extract the archive first and then perf perform the differential algorithm or prepare or conduct this operation between the extracted archive where you can get a more accurate result in other words a lower file size you can try that yourself using rdiv uh, dir which is to do on the directories and thank you I will move to the second video which is about uh, installing Moodle if you haven't so if you already have then just skip to the third video